I'm Alan from Presidia. In this short video, we're going to be looking a little bit more closely at decision trees with an IBM SPSS statistics. Following on from our first video showing how to run decision trees and what kind of output to expect, this video is going to concentrate on holdout samples. Holdout samples are an important technique to test the robustness of your model performance before you go any further. I hope you enjoyed the video. Look out at the end for some social media information and links to other videos similar to this one. Thank you. Following on from our first video, we are now going to look again at the telco.salv dataset. This dataset is available within the samples folder of your SPSS installation. We've seen that this data contains demographic information as well as product information for customers and can be used to perform an analysis indicating what pieces of information are most strongly related with a customer's decision to switch providers. To do this, we can use a decision tree. This time in performing the analysis, we want to make sure that if there are to use this analysis to make predictions for current customers, that we do so as reliably as possible. A great way to test the future performance of your analysis is to conduct a blind test. This is also known as a holdout sample. We reserve a chunk of data, for example 30%, that will be used only for testing how well our model performs. If the model performance is very different between the data used to create the model and the held back data used to test the model, then we lose confidence in how well the model will perform for new customers. In this case, the model may be too simple or it may be overfit. Generally speaking, we would like to see a similar performance level for both the training data and the testing data. To run this, we can use the split sample validation procedure specifying a 70% training data sample, which gives us a 30% testing data sample. An alternative technique is cross-validation, where the data is split, split into groups, say 10 groups, and 10 decision trees are created, each leaving a different 10% out as testing data. The final results are then aggregated to give a final decision tree. In this example, we use the more straightforward split sample validation. Upon running the procedure, we can see that two decision trees are created, one for the training sample and another for the testing sample. These can be reviewed in the usual way to identify the most important factors influencing a customer's decision to switch providers. Here we can see the most important piece of information is the once with service. And depending on whether they've had a small number of months with service or a large number of months with service, we can see a differing proportion that are likely to switch providers versus those that are not. Also presented in the classification table, which shows us how well our model performs on both the training and testing samples. Here, the accuracy is very similar between the two groups, 77.5% in the training data and 73.6% in the testing data. We can now use these results to set our expectations for identifying whether customers will switch providers. Thank you for watching this video. You can find more information, videos and other resources on our website. You can also subscribe to our newsletter and YouTube channel and follow us on social media so you'll never miss a thing.